Hi everyone. So today's video is about rewiring the mains cable for a Thorens TD124 classic turntable. And what you're seeing here in front of you is some of the things that you'll probably need in order to complete the work. So um, a crimping tool, some snips, a modern plug, a screwdriver, some insulating electrical insulating tape most likely, um, some eyelets or spade connectors which you can either crimp on or solder on. Some, I use these which are uh, little magnets which reduce the uh, EMI or RFI um, running down a cable and then the cable itself. This is modern three core cable I think it's 0.75 millimeter diameter uh, wires and it's good for it's an overkill really I mean it's a, a 3 amp uh, load for the turntable so I think this stuff runs up to 10 amps so it's well over spec but it's useful and it's uh, good flexible and um, I think it will provide plenty of years of life for the turntable so that's the beginning We'll go back to looking at the turntable and what I'm going to do is take you through step by step how to remove the old cable from here and then replace it with the new mains cable which we're going to use with the new wired plug. So uh, if you take a look at the turntable it's been turned upside down. This is the E50 motor for a Thorens and if you look at here in front of the E50 motor you'll see a terminal block and this is the area that we're concerned with. Um, this is where the mains, existing mains cable comes in, is held down by a fastener here and then is split into a terminal block where the two wires are providing live current into the turntable itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of this old cabling which effectively looks like this when it doesn't have a plug at the other end of it. A uh, very thin mains cable uh, of an older nature and if you want a modern cable double insulated with three cores which is what I'm going for then it will end up looking like something like this if I can focus it. Uh, this is double insulated three core mains cable of a flexible variety and that's important to me because I want lots of flexibility in not only how I install the cable because there's going to be some angles and such but also how I use it later on as well. If you take a look here's the terminal block yes there's two wires going in but a modern three wire connection has a earth. Now if you take a look to the right of that terminal block there's actually an earth connection here this yellow wire from the E50 motor onto the chassis so it's, it's like a chassis ground or earth. Uh, we're going to use the third wire from our mains, new mains cable and we're going to create a, uh, an end to that earth wire like an, with that eyelet or spade and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect it along with this earth connection here. So we're going to use that existing connection and I was given this instruction thankfully by some good chaps on the Pinkfish Media uh, website which is an audiophile website so thank you Tony and the team for giving me this this guidance it's certainly proving very useful. The length and type of cable so I've gone for a double insulated three core modern cable and the actual um, electrical load is I think it's only three amps required for the Thorens so you don't have to go very heavy on the gauge of cable uh, this one has three cores and each core I think is about 0.75 millimeters in diameter which is plenty good enough actually for up to 10 amps so it's over spec to some degree but I think the cable is is very good it's it looks robust and still flexible and it's a modern variety so it will serve me well and I'm happy with it. In terms of the length of cable itself uh, here's where I advise you pay some thought to this because it's not just about now but the future as well. Um, I often find I'm moving hi-fi around uh, intermittently and one of the things I regret is if it has a short connection 
because then it restricts my options for where I place my hi-fi uh, audio racks etc etc so I'm actually going to go for about two and a half meter length of cable mains cable so it gives me plenty of flexibility as to where I situate my turntable in the future so that's Generally speaking, the equipment, the next part of the video will be about me getting ready for creating the mains cable and actually disassembling the existing cable. But pay careful attention to where everything is sighted before you do that. Okay, so the first step to prepare, I personally will start with the actual mains cable, the new one. What I've done is I've taken this, the crimping tool, and if you have a look here, you've got various sizes for uh, wires. And what you can do is you can put the wire in between the crimping tool and then start squeezing it and scoring it, turning it until you are able to actually unsheath or take off that first layer, that white layer of insulation. What that'll do is reveal the inner three core wires, which are also all insulated, as you can see. Yeah, blue, brown, and the earth, which is green and yellow. Um, what I've done as well is I've just unscrewed the plug to reveal the plug. And the reason why that's important is what I like to do is I like to offer up the wire to the plug. And the important thing here is this retainer here, this fastener. If you unscrew these two screws sufficiently that the plastic retainer rises up, what you can do is just slip the wires underneath and what you're trying to do is in a fastened condition so let's say the wire is now underneath the retainer and you've screwed it in what is the length of the wires are they able to get to each of the terminals so can they successfully reach each of the terminals so that's the positive that can go there, that can go there. Yeah, each each wire basically can reach uh, each of the terminals that they need to get to. So the next stage is just to use the crimping tool again and look what I'm doing. I'm just going to insert it into one of the spaces for that wire. And then again, just rotating it and squeezing the crimping tool. I should be able to unsheath that layer of insulation to reveal the bare wire. Now what you do is you twist it so that the individual strands don't start fraying. Twist it like that and then do that with all three of them to get them ready. To okay, each of the three wires have, have been bared. Uh, I've loosened this retainer here by unscrewing it so that the plastic part lifts up and that will allow me to insert the wires a little bit fiddly please excuse me so I've inserted the wires there what I'm going to do is just use the screwdriver to lift them up so that I can get them all under there and the aim is to get the white sleeve the outer insulation underneath that retainer nice and snug like that and now we can wire up each of the terminals as I'll show you now. So the brown one is here next to the fuse. That's the positive. The earth is at the top there. And then the blue is neutral, goes to the left here. Okay. Vintage turntable probably don't draw that much current, 13 amps. So I actually put in a lower value uh, fuse in there, 5 amps, uh, to protect the electronics and circuitry in my Thorins. Tip there, make sure you check the fuse before you seal up your plug. Make sure it's a, a reasonable compared to the electronics or current draw on your turntable. Next, what we'll be doing is we're looking at 
the other exposed end which is the end that goes into the actual turntable itself where the current wiring is so next job is to actually decouple or detach the aged wiring from the thorns so we're going to go back to the thorns and start unconnecting or disconnecting uh, all of this old two core wire and then replacing it with the new three core okay so first thing is get your flathead screwdriver and you remember this fastener here before you get to the terminal block so I'm going to loosen the fastener comes out pretty well pretty easily now keep that in a safe place because you're going to need it again right now you get to the terminal block and instead of this big flathead screwdriver you're going to need a smaller precision screwdriver again with flathead um, the terminal blocks you're going to have to access from the top and then what you're going to need to do is loosen them from the top like so don't take them all the way out just enough so that you can dislodge the wires now that ladies and gents is your 50 or 60 year old two core wiring disconnected from your Thorin's turntable. Okay, so next stage, um, what I've done is I've trimmed back the other end of the mains cable and I've separated out the three cores and started um, unsheathing them to a length which I think works for this Thorin's. So what I've done is I've measured from where the retainer clip would be uh, onto the terminal block and also bearing in mind the earth wire so I need sufficient length from that point to get the earth wire over to that grounding position there and that's given me this length of wires and what I've also decided on is I will go with this spade connector and I will insert that onto the earth wire and I will have to crimp it on I don't have uh, a specific pair of crimpers so I'm using this pair of pliers and I'll attach it so bear with me one second while I do that and then I'll start again with inserting it back onto the thorns. Next part of the video is actually the terminal block itself so before I offer up the wires I have to tell you which side is going to be the positive and which side is neutral. Okay so the uh, plug is now all wired up um, I'm very happy with that everything's in there securely um, one thing else to note is that most plugs probably come with a 13 amp fuse certainly this one did now remember the fragile electronics in your so what I'd suggest you do at this stage is or even before you start the project is just make sure you absolutely know where each of the live neutral and earth wires will go if you're using a three core modern cable with your turntable once you've got that in hand you'll know exactly where to place those cables next step will be actually inserting the cable now okay so you can probably see now what i've done is i've managed to connect the live wire to the right hand side of the terminal block and the neutral wire to the left hand terminal block and they've gone in nicely and neatly that just leaves the earth wire and as you can see I've crimped on that spade connector and what I've done is I've already loosened that earth or the grounding point there and what I'm going to try and do is one handed Try and slide that spade connector underneath that nut. Sorry. Like so. It's 
pretty good. And then I will try again one handed to try and screw that in for you so you can see what's going on. Just tight enough that it's nice and secure without over stressing. That's pretty good. Now you can see I've deliberately left this retainer unfastened so that I can do final adjustment and tightening to secure the cable. Because what this does is it secures the cable before coming to the contact points here so it doesn't stress just in case the cable's pulled from the other side. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just make the final adjustment there, line it up and then screw in that retainer and that should be my connections done for the Thorns TD124. I'll tidy that up just to make sure it, there's no exposed wires or anything and make sure the spade connectors securely under the grounding point. Okay so uh, I've managed to wire everything up now. Um, I've connected it as per the uh, picture which was shared to me, uh, shared with me by Tony at the Pinkfish Media uh, Forum and I've got the cable all nicely uh, connected, the plugs um, all connected and I'm going to put it in for the moment of truth. I'm going to uh, connect it to the power and let's see what happens. Alright so uh, this is my That's the power gone in. All right. Now, uh, with these Thorins, um, everything works off this um, control knob. Um, it's currently set at zero. You can probably see uh, that's that's uh, just a place for switching off the motor, essentially. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn that to one of the speeds, and let's see. The strobe light here should come on and the platter should turn. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's alive! Yeah, fantastic. Alright, so um, a bit of DIY there. I'm not the most confident DIYer, uh, certainly not, but um, thanks to some good help from hi-fi or audio file colleagues who've given me some instructions and a bit of courage there to try and attempt this DIY myself. Um, some clear instructions always help. Um, turn to the manuals, turn to good knowledgeable people as I've said and take reasonable precautions when you're doing work like this and you will get the fruit of your labours as I have with this Thorens which is a beautiful old deck. This is the beginning I guess of getting it properly recommissioned um, I've just fitted the tone arm, um, it's a, an old SME 3009 which is like a classic pairing. It's going to take you know, quite a bit of time to do all the adjustments and everything to the deck and the tone arm getting everything ready to play records on but I'm delighted that the first phase which is connecting the mains, a new mains lead, a modern mains lead has worked worked very well. Hopefully this will encourage you. Uh, look at the links below in the description for the video for some further resources on this if you're interested. Good luck everyone. If you've liked the video please consider subscribing and just press the like button as well. That would be much appreciated. Take care. Bye.